Welcome back to Switzer and Australia's Business Channel. My next guest was recently named the Telstra New South Wales Businesswoman of the Year and her day job actually involves running Mervac. And she comes to the program just when we hear that home prices were up 9% for the year nationally and a whopping 14.5% for Sydney. So what does Susan Lloyd Hurwitz think lies ahead for the property market? And she joins me in the studio. How are you, Susan? Very well, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Did you ever think you'd pull off an award like that? That? No, I was I was very surprised. In fact, I hadn't prepared a speech; had to give two, yeah. um, and it was it was a real honour because the calibre of women in the awards is mm. just outstanding. The stories, the backgrounds. So mm. it was a surprise and a, and a real honour. Well, the one thing I, I enjoyed, because I was actually there at, at the speech, as I told you earlier, uh, was that you know you kind of have a, a weird background, don't you? Well, what was your thesis that you did when well, so you were my, a young student? My thesis, uh, I did uh, urban geography yeah. and my thesis was on the migration of Icelanders to Australia, which as I said on the night is fantastic career preparation. Yeah, are there many Icelanders that have come to Australia? Well, at the time there were 93. I met them all and interviewed <laughs> them all. Right, okay. All right. But as you point out, urban geography and working for Murdoch, that is actually a good fit. It is a good fit because Mervax is essentially an urban company. Yeah. We're all about um, offices, retail, building apartments, mm. subdividing land for communities. So we're essentially about cities mm. and urban geography is all, all about cities. OK, let's start in an area that a lot of my viewers would care about. Um, sure, Sydney's had a, a massive rise, 14.5 per cent, but they, they went through about 10 years of very low price rises. Well, what's your feeling about the, the national picture for property prices? You are in just about every state, aren't you, Mervac? No, we're in the major states. And uh, our, first of all, our view would be that there is no Australian property market. It is quite differentiated yeah. across, across markets. Uh, there has been some strong run-up run last year, but the pace is slowing. And so it's our view that we're in for a fairly long, steady increase in housing activity. Mm. Um, and we probably think there's two to five years to run in that marketplace, as long as price growth remains moderate. Mm. Yeah. And because interest rates aren't rising, it seems to me that the logical reason why the momentum's starting to slow up is that prices have gone too high and some people are just dropping out of the market because they, they can't participate. We're certainly not seeing that in our portfolio. We've had some fantastic releases recently. Uh, we launched 174 apartments at Green Square, which, as you know, yeah. Australia's largest urban renewal that we're doing yeah. in partnership with Urban For Growth. people who don't know, that's around the airport, really, isn't it? Yeah, between the city and the airport. Yeah. We sold yeah. all, all uh, 174 on the weekend. We're seeing similarly very well, strong... Well, you, you, you opened them up on the weekend, you sold them in one weekend. We did. Um, to our database. So, so with well, that sounds like a pretty cool property market. <laughs> uh, so we think that there's, there's still strength in the market, but the pace of price increase has come off, which we think is important because it's certainly unsustainable in, in the mid-teens, mm. year on year. But the, they weren't auctioned. You, you, you established a price for those places, I presume? That's right. So yeah. people register their interest and then on the day they come um, and pay a deposit uh, for yeah. apartment that they want. So it's and when will that be finished? Uh, we'll be starting construction um, as soon as we possibly can, so uh, 2016 we'll start delivering yeah. apartments to the market. A lot of people say the, the problem with the Australian market is there's, we have a supply problem. Is there a supply problem in most states or does it vary state to state? It really varies. So Sydney has been um, undersupplied for a decade. So right. we could build at the pace we're building at now for another 10 years and we wouldn't write the balance of supply and mm, demand. Okay. Um, because don't forget, Australia has very strong population growth in a global context. Um, so we have uh, migrants arriving every week and they need to be housed. Yep. Um, Melbourne's done a better job with controlling supply, so it's more in balance in supply mm. and demand. Um, it's Sydney where there's a real fundamental uh, undersupply of housing. Yeah, I, I had Margaret Lamas on the show last night, and you know, Margaret knows a lot about, about property. And she was making the point that uh, around Brisbane, the CBD, there's been an oversupply. And of course, Docklands, people always talk about. Uh, uh, oversupply there. Is that something that you agree with? Uh, no, I think you have to go down to one more level below that. Um, so we would agree, for example, in Melbourne there's an oversupply in investor grade products. So think studios, one bedrooms, no car park. Mm. Um, but we're very successfully selling our Yarra's Edge um, product and continuing to develop the next tower. That's not Docklands, is it? That's in, in it's Yarra. opposite Docklands, so on Yarra, Yarra's Edge. Okay, right. um, so you have to be quite um, granular in your assessment of markets. You mm. can't just say Melbourne or even Melbourne CBD. Yeah. Again, in Brisbane, we recently gained confidence in the market to launch um, two apartment projects, mm. and one at Newstead and one on South Bank. So mm. uh, we believe there's sufficient demand in that market for our product. Yeah, and Newstead is actually a, a real up-and-coming suburb in, in Brisbane, isn't it? Oh, it really is. 
cities and it's so vibrant now. The shopping centres open there. There's a real sense of community. It's right near the city. It's a very successful development. Mm. So, so I'm getting a feeling from you that if, if you were an investor, it's just picking the right sort of property because you're Yarra, Yarra Edge. Is it Yarra's Edge? Yarra's Edge. Why is that so so much better? Because I must admit, when people told me there was an oversupply in Docklands, well, I thought, well, eventually the price will have to come off the boil, and, and maybe people who who want to buy and don't want to be investors will take those properties. But people say, I oh, know that's not going to happen, and I, and I seem to get the same message from you that there are certain properties that maybe couples with a child will want to move into, they're not the same properties that investors want to buy? There is definitely different stock for owner-occupiers and a, a purely investor-grade mm -hmm. um, stock that's being, that's being built. Uh, we have very strong repeat customers at Mervac. We have people who buy in every tower that we develop, mm -hmm. a very strong, loyal customer following, and we know what type of product to create to attract that market. Mm -hmm. And we try and balance between owner-occupiers owner and investors, but at a certain quality point. Yeah. Are you, or have you found over the last, say, five years that you are getting a surge of demand from people with self-managed super funds who, who are now starting to realise that they actually have, can hold direct property in their fund rather than having to rely on REITs and, and, and they like the idea of it? It's interesting because it's, it's one of the headlines that you read a lot. Yeah. So we thought we'll go and test this in our portfolio mm. and we looked at our sales over the last year to see how many were to self-managed super fund investors. Yeah. The answer was 2%, yep. which is I'm a surprisingly low number if you were to take yeah. the headlines. And your company account. should be a pretty good gauge because I would have thought a lot of people in self-managed super funds would have been looking at quality developers to go, to go into those sorts of properties. Yeah. I keep hearing that the vast majority of self-managed super fund people buying property are businesses, putting their businesses into their self-managed super fund. What other signs are you seeing in the market? That are, I, I get a real feeling that you're pretty optimistic about, and you've actually mentioned is there's probably a two to five years upside for the property market. But what other things, signs out there are you seeing? Like, like today we saw NAB business conditions, a record jump. And I'm not surprised. I've seen some anecdotal, some, some good uh, evidence of, for example, advertising spending starting to improve. Are you seeing something that makes you feel a bit more confident about 2015 than 14? Well, I think uh, those things really pertain to the office market, and we've obviously got a very substantial office portfolio of mm. very high quality assets around the country. And we're certainly seeing the forward-looking demand indicators look quite good, mm. but it hasn't really translated into very strong demand increases for office. So mm. we're still, I think, one or two years away from getting a situation where there's a reduction in incentives, where we're getting significant rent growth. Um, so demand indicators look good, mm. but we're not yet seeing really sustained growth in occupancy. It's funny, um, Susan, because it reminds me of what Tanya Brown White from Macquarie was saying uh, a few years ago, this is going to be a slow grind higher. So it's like in your industry, you're actually describing exact. It's, we're going higher, but it's not as fast as you'd like, but it may well last a, a lot longer because it's a slow grind higher. Well, to that point, I would say we, we actually do like it. We, we think this is a longer, slower cycle mm. um, than a short, sharp cycle. Mm. Um, and so to that end, uh, we've accelerated how much residential uh, property we're putting into the market. We're building as fast as we can yeah. um, to make sure that we're selling into that demand while the demand is there. And you're saying you're mixing more towards residential because you think that's where the, the real future is at least in the short term? We've got a very significant pipeline. We're, re um, we're releasing 2,700 apartments this year, for example. Mm. So That sounds like confidence. It's uh, well, We've got to go while the market's there yeah. and uh, the product's there, so we're selling as fast as we can. Well, Susan, it's great to have you on the program. I hope you win the national award. Oh, are, you, you. are you based in New South Wales? Yes, based here in Sydney. Yeah, it'd be good to see the, a person from New South Wales take out well, the thank national you. award. Um, and, uh, and I hope the company does well as well. I always love a CEO that comes on to the show to talk about about the company. Thank you. Thanks very much. That's Susan Lloyd Hurwitz from Mervac. Coming up, more on property with an award-winning buyer's agent.